I'm Joe Zellner, an interpreter here at the Robbins House, and I also portray Peter Robbins, the original owner of this early 19th century two-family house here in Concord, Massachusetts. This house is a significant landmark in the town's African-American history. It was built by Humphrey Barrett of Concord Town, but first deeded and occupied in 1823 by Peter Robbins and Susan Robbins Garrison, the adult children of Caesar Robbins. Caesar was a formerly enslaved man and a veteran of two colonial American wars, the French and Indian War of 1754 and the American Revolution in 1775. Caesar served with the colonial militias in these wars and came to live in Concord Town as a free man once the revolution was ended. African American soldiers, sailors, and laborers fought and served in all of the American wars throughout the colonial and national history eras. Even during the 250 year period of legal racial enslavement in the colonies and the United States. Were those African Americans fighting for the same reasons that their European and American brothers in arms were fighting? I'm wearing the uniform of a federal infantryman. Add the leather, the canteen, and his rifle, and he's dressed up for combat. African-American infantrymen fought in the United States Civil War. Slavery in the United States was abolished as a result of that war, and subsequent legislation made it part of the Constitution. African-American soldiers have served and fought and distinguished themselves in that war and in successive U.S. wars right up to the present day. In a few of the colonial militias, African-Americans served in integrated companies and were granted equal status to the white volunteers. This practice diminished and ceased during the early years of the Republic until blacks were summarily excluded from serving in the army. As for a soldier in the U.S. Civil War, it might be easy to say that African-American soldiers were fighting for the freedom and liberty of those enslaved, African-Americans, that is, to end slavery. But note that many years earlier in the American Revolution, the colonists also fought to gain freedom and liberty. As a result of the revolution, European American soldiers, citizens, and governments gained freedom and liberty, as was also gained by some of the African American veterans of the war who were granted their freedom for their service. But racial slavery overall was not ended, nor did all African Americans win their freedom and liberty. It is well known that Concord Town and its surrounding towns sent many men to fight in the colonial wars and in the national wars. The Dugan family lived here in Concord and George Washington Dugan, a son in that family, served in the 54th Massachusetts Volunteer Infantry Regiment. It was the first regiment of African American soldiers raised in the North during the Civil War. Dugan gave his life in that regiment's siege and assault to capture Charleston, South Carolina in 1863. It was during the U.S. Civil War that the federal government first gave recognition and authorization to use African-American troops in the Army. Some commanders had given field orders to use African-Americans as soldiers and laborers well before the authorization by the Lincoln government in Washington, D.C. The African-American troops served in racially segregated regiments and companies, each led by white commissioned officers. Non-commissioned officers were appointed from the ranks. After the war, many towns in the nation raised monuments to honor these honored dead killed in the Civil War. This is the monument that Concord raised.
The sons of Concord's honored dead are inscribed on this monument. However, George Washington Dugan's name was not inscribed. His service was not recognized in this way. What was he fighting for? For African-American soldiers in many circumstances, their service was often underreported and unreported. They often were denigrated by the military leadership despite their work and contribution to the service. African-American troops gave honorable service in all of the nation's conflicts. During the generations of enslavement and after slavery was abolished, as military service volunteers all served to honor the responsibilities and obligations of citizens in a free democracy. They gave their service, but what did they get in return? African-American soldiers served in racially segregated military units that easily allowed for distinct treatment of African-American soldiers. In the U.S., the civilian society allowed for separate and unequal treatment of African-American citizens, and many of those same distinct and unequal treatments were carried over into the military. When African-American enslavement was abolished, freedom was gained, but not individual liberty, and independence continued to be systematically denied from them for the now free African-American population. The goal and hope of liberty and equal treatment under law was not gained through serving in the military. Through all of their past, African Americans had worked to find ways to gain equal and non-discriminatory status in United States society. Completion of military service had the potential of offering honorable recognition upon re-entry to civilian society, but often it was not so. What were African American soldiers fighting for? Through all of the U.S. wars and the more recent 20th and 21st century U.S. international military interventions, African Americans have served with distinction in the military services. But it was not until 1953 that the last racially segregated unit in the military was desegregated. Military service was a valuable and needed service, yet it can offer great rewards and benefits. The men and women declare their own reasons and rationale for making the decision to serve their country through military service. And unless the soldier states his or her reason or reasons for serving, we can only guess as to their motivation for serving. Historically, for many 20th century African American soldiers, they found greater acceptance for themselves among the civilian populations abroad than they found in the U.S. population at home when they returned to the United States. For these two men of Concord, Massachusetts, Caesar Robbins and George Washington Dugan, who gave their service in the 18th and 19th centuries, we can consider their circumstances at the time and make a guess as to what were their motivations to serve in the militias and armies of their day. Can you decide what they and African American soldiers after them were fighting for? What were they fighting for?